Hello everyone and welcome to this short video on how to use Audacity to create MP3 files for your advice templates. Got your headphones on? Okay, let's get started. Why create digital audio for students? A growing body of research indicates that the addition of audio can significantly improve online learning. The October 2006 issue of the International Journal of Instructional Technology contains an article based upon this research about the potential impact. The article shows how digital audio, when used effectively, can increase student comprehension and retention by gradually altering the long-term memory. How do you get started? The first step is to download and install a copy of Audacity onto your computer. Audacity is a copyright free program that allows you to create MP3s, an abbreviation for MPEG Layer 3, a highly compressed audio file that can be easily shared. To download the latest version of Audacity, an 8.5 megabyte program, go to the Audacity website. Click on Download Audacity 1.26 access the Audacity download page. First, select your operating system, which will be either Windows or Mac, and Windows is the default. If the Windows option is not displayed, click on Windows in the shaded menu box. To begin downloading the program, left-click on Audacity 1.26 installer. After you click, a dialog box will appear. Select the Save to Disk option. On your computer's desktop, locate the Audacity Win 1.2 executable file. Double click it to open it. And once you do, Windows Install Wizard will now take you through the process of installing Audacity on your computer. To begin the installation process, simply click Next. The screen that will appear is GNU's License Agreement, which simply states that Audacity is a free program which you cannot copyright. GNU is a group that distributes free software. Click the I accept the agreement and then click Next. Here is a box of general and technical information about the program. Click Next again. Now you'll be asked to name the folder that will contain the program files. By default, you should see C, the letter of your hard drive, backslash program files, backslash audacity. If not, enter those exact words and symbols into the address window and be sure to use backslashes. Clicking Next will take you to the additional task dialog box. Be sure to click inside both boxes create a desktop icon and associate Audacity project files. Click Next and then you will confirm your destination for the files and additional task selections. Once you have confirmed those simply click Install and once you do wait for the program to be installed now that it is finished, be sure there is a check mark in the Launch Audacity box and then click Finish. Audacity will now launch its opening screen and is now ready to record your first audio. Before recording your first MP3, you may wish to familiarize yourself with some of the Audacity functions and preferences. The Audacity Recorder looks and operates very much like the handheld recording devices you're probably already familiar with. Red is for record, blue for pause, and you click again to resume, and yellow to stop. It's important to note that a recording can only be saved and exited from after clicking the yellow square stop button. The first slider on the left adjusts the output volume during the playback, and the second slider adjusts the input volume 
of the microphone volume during your recording. Again, to stop your recording and to save it, click the yellow stop button. Okay, let's make a quick sample recording to make sure we understand everything that's going on. All you do to begin is put on your headphones and click record. And as you can see, my voice is now being recorded on the upper track, the left track, as well as the bottom track, the right track. Also notice that in the upper right hand window, the tracks are recording the level of my input. And you can watch those red and pink bars change as I move the input slider. Now that we've made a sample recording, and we've tested our input volume and we're happy with it, we're now going to save our recording. And we do that by clicking on the yellow button, the stop button. And that's the only way we can save and exit and export our recording. Next we go to File, click, and pull down to Export as WAV, W-A-V. Click again, and a dialog box will open. Click to find the place to save your files. I always save mine on the desktop. Give your file a name. We'll call this one Test File. And then clicking Save will save it as a WAV file, which will then appear on your desktop. Once you've located the file on your desktop, go ahead and open it up in your default media player and test the recording for proper sound and make sure there is no background noise. Also make sure that your mouth was positioned properly so that your F's and B's and P's are not exploding on the mic. Once you're satisfied, go ahead and send that WAV file to me however you need to. Uh, you can attach them as emails, although these WAV files can be rather large and you might not get more than just one or two per email. But however you get them to me, that's just fine and I will be happy to work with them like that.